Hi everyone, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AllianyTutors.com and in this video we're going to look at initial rates and the ID and clock. Now we're basically going to look at two methods which we can determine the order of a reaction by looking at the initial rate. And the two methods that we're going to look at are doing it graphically like this, which is a concentration against a time graph, uh, or we can do something called a clock reaction, which is in particular I'm going to look at the ID and clock as that's probably one of the more common examples. Um, so we're going to start by looking at what initial rate actually means first. So initial rate of reaction is basically the rate of the reaction right at the start. So this would be at time zero, effectively. Uh, and we can use this, because it's really useful, we can use it to work out the order of reactions and we can compare them. Uh, and we can do that by doing two ways, like I say, which is by plotting the concentration versus time graph or we can carry out a clock reaction. So just briefly going to uh, show you how we can work out both, what we can use um, to measure the initial rate. So we're going to start with the graph version here first. Now, when you do a reaction, you set it away and you're monitoring the uh, rate at which either a reactant is used up, like this graph, or a product is produced, which would mean it would go the other way. So in this case, we're going to look at reactant being used up. And you would do that either by looking for color change or you might look for a change in mass, um, or uh, you might be looking for a product that's being produced. So for example, if it's a gas, you would measure how much gas was being produced um, over a specific time period. So we're going to have a look at this one here, and I've got, some, uh, I've got a curve here with some data on it, and effectively all we're doing is we're working out the gradient at time zero. This is when the reaction started, and what we do when we work out the gradient is the change in y over the change in x. So you draw a triangle like this, there's the gradient line there, and this is um, the gradient at time zero. We do y, we do x, and then this will tell us the initial rate for this reaction. And the idea is, is that you then restart the reaction, but you change the concentration of a different reactant uh, and keep everything else the same. Uh, and what that allows us to do, uh, well then we run that reaction again, uh, and then we plot our results, uh, work out the gradient, and then get our... Um, uh, get our initial rate value and what that allows us to do is to compare the initial rate of the previous reaction with this one uh, and hence we can work out the order of reaction if that concentration change has had an effect so for example if we double the concentration of one reaction and that has had an effect on doubling the rate then what we can say is that is first order with respect to reactant a reactant b or whatever your whatever you're measuring. So that's effectively how we do it. That's quite time consuming because you have to draw a graph every time you want to work out the, um, the uh, initial rate of reaction. So there is a slightly quicker way and reactions such as the iodine clock reaction or the sodium thiosulfate reaction um, allows us to effectively measure rate without drawing a graph. Uh, and it works because we get a color change uh, and it only appears after a certain length of time. And that's why we call it a clock reaction. So, for example, we've got this one here, and this is hydrogen peroxide reacting with iodide ions uh, in acidic conditions. And what will happen is this will produce iodine, which is I2, and water. Now, when we have um, this reaction happening, effectively all of this is colorless, uh, and this will go black when it reacts with starch. And so in this reaction here, you would add starch to it, uh, and that gives you a really clear indication as soon as you see that black um, solutions start to form, that's the length of time it took for that reaction to occur at them particular concentrations. Now what we can do is we can, just like the previous one, is we can alter the concentrations of our reactants, uh, repeat the experiment, and again measure how long it takes for that black dark colour to appear. Uh, and uh, like with the previous one, we can then um, we can then measure that time we can compare it with the previous time and see what effects, if any, the change in concentration of your reactants has had on the initial rate. Uh, and again, that allows us to work out the order of the reaction if it's zero, first, second order, etc. So um, really, really useful, but you can see this is a lot simpler to do than this one here. Um, but um, that's it. Hope that helps. Bye.